revelation. And you want people to experience what you experience. So a formula coming to Trinity, as several of them are now, and you want them to experience your country. What is one of the places that you want them? You want to carry them where? To Maratha's beach. If they're going to, if they're in Tobago, you want them to see Beach and Point. You want them to, you want to carry them down so they could do what? They could get on the boat and go out to the Boko Reef and the Island Moon. You want them to see that. You want them to know about that. Just like that as believers. We want people to know about Jesus Christ. We want them to know. Share our faith. Several people just need to summon the courage to do this. Look, folks, basically it says, you need to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and just go on do it. Follow Nike's advice. Just do it. You might stumble and bumble your way through. That's fine. Just do it. You will get better over time. The more you do this, the more professional, the better you get. It actually forces you to grow. Literally. Because you are speaking to people who at any time could ask you any question. And you know when they come with who was Cain's wife? And those kind of questions. How that could go all over the place. But yeah, but you can rein that straight back and talk about Jesus. Share your faith. Share your faith. This one is related to sharing your faith. But not the same. These signs will suffer. This is the mandate. Make a disciples of Jesus Christ, changing the world one life at a time. That first part, make a disciples of Jesus Christ, that is the mandate for the whole church. The whole church has a mandate. Make disciples of Jesus Christ. Note very importantly, make disciples, not converts. Two very different things. A convert is a person who once believed that and now believes this. That person might remain there. A disciple is a student of Jesus, an imitator of Christ, one who is like him. We are called Christians because we are supposed to be like him. Yeah. And we, we, have a, we have an acrostic that, that helps us. You might not have seen it for a while. I'm still working on getting it printed and keeping each letter. Be disciplined in daily devotion. Right? I, involved in ministry. And every letter goes down and represents something. When we speak about C, committed to the Lord. The last one is S. Sharing your faith with others. It attempts to describe what a disciple of Christ looks like. The characteristics of a disciple. Now, those are just a limited number, but it helps us to focus. Make disciples of Jesus Christ. We want people to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. They say, yeah, going to heaven if you die now. That's not all we want. While you are here on the earth, we want you to live like Jesus. Disciple. Yes. Guess now what the important thing is here. That is a responsibility not of us, if I fold ministry. It is widely believed that we leaders are the ones who must do this to disciple everybody. That's not what our responsibility is. Everyone has a responsibility to disciple himself. Disciple himself. Discipleship is about imparting life, life on life. Life on life. There are technical times we'll sit and read the Bible and go through specific things. But more than that, it's one life impacting upon another life. It's spending time pouring into that person. So I am one person. I may be able to, to disciple two, maybe three persons at a time. But if there are ten of us, and each of us is discipling two persons, or even bring it down, each of us focuses for one year on discipling one person. So 10 of us will disciple 10 others. So we have 20 disciples now. The next year, guess what? Each one of those other 10 goes on to disciple 10 more. And the original 10 goes on to disciple another 10. And you get a multiply even. But if we all say, well, nice pastor job, then we go lower. We get small addition. Disciple someone. When you disciple someone, you teach them about Christ. One of the things I learned very early is one of the best ways to learn something and revise something 
especially revision, is to teach us. Yeah? So, let's roll back, roll back the years. Trigonometry. When I was in Form 2, I came across tri trigonometry. I love tricks. I thought this was great. This was great stuff. I still remember those those, those, those formulas from that. If I wanted to teach somebody else trigonometry, I need to what? I need to know trigonometry. I need to know what the formula is. If I'm trying to teach them and I don't know the formula, I will realize very quickly, you don't know the formula, go and check the formula. When you teach someone, you realize very quickly where you're strong and where you're weak and what you need to build up on. But it gives you the opportunity to review and revise what you already know and reinforce what you have. So when we disciple someone for Christ, we teach them to be like Jesus. It helps us to walk straight because guess what? They're looking at us for the example. So here, here's, here's his side swipe. Right? So maybe several believers don't really want people to look to them for example. Hence they don't disciple others. Talk to them. When people are looking at you, for example, you consciously walk straight. If you're hiding and you're undercover, you can do what you want. Basically, but God sees. It's a, it's a joke because God sees. Yeah? But disciple. We want to move to the place where every one of us will disciple others. So look at the vision statement. Second one. A fellowship of disciples of Jesus Christ doing what? Making other disciples of Jesus Christ. It continues. We become disciples and then we make other disciples. We teach them to make other disciples. So it continues down the line. Continues down the line. Make disciples. Let me, let, let me share this last one with you. That's intended to stretch you. Serving ministry. Serving ministry. I have said a few times, and I will say it much more than a few times again, there is no gift in the Bible. Cover to cover, I have checked it. No gift in the Bible called bench warming. None. Several gifts identified. Bench warming, not one of them. It's not in the Hebrew, it's not in the Greek. It's not even in the English. So the practice of believers coming to church service and being connected to the church community and only being consumers of the ministry is not biblical. Not biblical. God expects all of us to be engaged, to be involved in the ministry, serving somewhere, somehow. But pastor, what does that have to do with growing? There are few things that help us to grow, like actually engaging and being involved. Few things. So here's a question. Let's take a military example. A person is serving in the military. They are serving as an officer. So there are some things that they don't do anymore. They used to do those things when, when they were lower, but now they don't do those things anymore. So let's talk about somebody who is who now has responsibility for training a marksman, the sniper, the sharpshooters. They have responsibility for that. When they were lower ranks, they, that person was a sniper. And that person spent hours and hours on the range sharpening their skin with a particular weapon. Now that person is an officer and that person is no longer engaged in doing that. You think that person's skill, if you put the rifle in that person's hand and say go to the range and hit that target, you think that person can go and do that easily? No. They will miss the target. They will be nowhere as sharp as they would. The, the act of doing something causes you to improve and sharpen in exactly that very same thing. That's right, that's right. If we are engaged in serving in the ministry, we are engaged in serving as a greeter, I'm usher. We engage in serving and singing a praise and worship team. We are engaged on play and on with the, with the system as well. We are engaged in hospitality. We are engaged in a number of things. We, guess what? We are sharpening, building, growing in all those areas. Now, for me, it's just because of the way I was raised in the faith, I never sat down. So today, I have difficulty relating to the concept 
of believers simply coming and consuming ministry. I don't understand it and I make no apology for it. I don't understand it. But I don't understand it because I didn't experience it and I didn't experience it because it's not supposed to happen. Yeah? So there's something called the Pareto Principle. It's also called 80-20. Yeah? 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. That's what that is. So 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. Yeah? So that's what that is. So 20% of the people doing most of the work. That could never work. That could never work. You don't know, progress that way. When we engage in ministry, when we engage in serving, when we sign up and we say, I want to serve in this area, we get involved. We grow. So here's a, here's a hypothetical, a thought question, right? A person you may perceive as being a mature Christian believer. Pick any one of them. And then ask this next question. Is that person a bench or is that person actively involved in ministry? I would suggest to you that probably nine and a half out of ten, the person that you thought about is actually actively involved in ministry. And the exception or two may be not involved in ministry. Because people who are actively involved in serving, engaging in ministry on the front lines, those persons are growing. They are growing. God gave us gifts not to keep them to ourselves, not to hide with them, but to use them. He gave us gifts to do that. He gave us gifts so that the whole body can work together, join perfectly together, everyone playing their role, and get where we go. Let me see the drivers among us. Drivers? Yeah, drivers. No more drivers? Okay, just a couple drivers? Okay. So those so those of us who are home, so those who can ride a bicycle. Yeah, you can ride a bicycle. At some point in life, you ride a bicycle, right? So the bicycle has various parts, right? Call somebody pass the bicycle. The one, the one you hold on to is what? The, the wrong thing in the front is what? The what? The wrong thing in the front. The wheel. The wrong thing in the back. What's the difference between the two? What is the front wheel? Next one is the back wheel. You just put your foot on something and it's going wrong. Pedal. And then the pedal is connected to something. The chain. The chain is connected to something. The back wheel, yeah. <laughs> Right? So, that, that machine has several moving parts. So here's the question. What happens when the axle and the back tire cease? That means that the wheel doesn't rotate. What happens then? When you try to, when you try to press down the pedal and, and go wrong, what happens then? Does the bike simply roll forward as normal? No, it doesn't. Because one part in the system is not working. One part in the system is not doing what it should be doing, and it affects the whole. You can still move the bike. You can pick it up, put it in shoulders, and carry it. You can do. You can still move it, but it will not function in the way that was intended to function. When we have giftings, and God has placed those things in us, intending us to serve in particular capacities and particular areas, and we don't do that, it affects the function of the. The entire body. The entire body. Think about people who have heart palpitations. The heart is misfiring. Think about people who have cerebral palsy. The connections from the brain are not going to where they need to go properly. Yeah? Think about people who have lung diseases and they're wheezing and there's a real something in the system is not working properly, hindering the flow and the, the entire body from operating. So when you keep your gift to yourself and you don't serve, you are hindering the flow of the entire body. Serve. Serve. Children with childhood diseases have difficulty growing properly. They can become stunted, they can be malnourished because of particular diseases in them. Something in them is not functioning properly so they can't grow like they should. If you don't serve in ministry, there's no outlet for ministry for you. There's no way for you to grab onto and help you grow. Grow by serving in ministry. Amen? Serve. So let's do the reverse in order. Serve in ministry. Disciple someone. Share your faith. Do some prayer journaling. Get devotionals and use them. Study the word of God. If you apply these things in your life, if you do these things, folks, there's no way that you're not going to grow. There's no way. There's no way. You're going to grow. But you need to put a priority on growth, the desire to grow, 
and allow God to use you, bless you. So this is not intended to, to, to pat me on the back. Am I a blessing to you? Two things happened. That was a little muted and a little delayed. A little concerned, but <laughs> that's why. That's why. Right? I am a blessing to you, not because I held back my gift. Not because I just said, well, I'm not interested in studying. I don't do this and I don't do that. I'm a blessing to you not because of, of I didn't do. I'm a blessing to you because I allowed God to use the things that he's put in me. Use them. There are other people who got saved around the same time that I got saved. Some of those people not even serving God now. Hmm. But I'm leading God's people. I've grown considerably. And there's plenty more room for me to grow. I'm a giant. Eh? Not physically here. <laughs> I'm a giant. I know that. The capacity that God has put in me. This is no mean boast. This is not my boast. This is understanding who I am. I'm a giant. And I need to fulfill that. I need to step into those roles. When those doors open, step into them and go ahead and do it. In the name of Jesus. To do it. Two quick examples. In this room, six months ago, I got the shock of my life. When my name appeared on the board, in a voting process to be to be on the national council and my name appeared in the first round of voting my name appeared confirmed this man is not on the national council i was shocked that was not in my mind the first thing that crossed my mind was that same morning another leader says to me i'm voting for you eh? i wasn't even thinking about who is going to get on and he comes and tells me that and my name appears and i'm now serving on the national council Another one, July of last year. I'm part of the Sour Baratari Network of Churches. So we got together last year, we held a crusade, and then we formalized an arrangement and we said, yeah, we want to stay together, we want to do some things together. I've been working on July of last year. Bishop Hassan Ali, who served, who served as before chairman of, of that group, calls me and says, Jason, I want to nominate you as chairman. So I said, thank you. I said, let me, let me, let me pray about that. And I discuss it with Sister Susie. We talk about it. We consider it in prayer. And we decide, okay, let's accept the nomination. And the nomination is put forward in a meeting is accepted. Today, what am I doing? Today, I am leading other leaders. Today, I'm leading other people whose congregations are larger than this. I'm leading other people today who have been serving in the ministry longer than I am. But they're putting some confidence in me that God has called me and anointed me to do what I'm doing now so that I can go ahead and do that. We have a long road ahead of us that can knit the church together, but we're going to get there in the name of Jesus. Can't do that by being a dwarf. Spiritually. Can't do that. Have to be able to grow. And like, like just like that, many of us, God has placed various things inside of us and we need to grow into them. We need to grow into them. Consider what, what ministry would have been like today if I weren't serving here. Not that I'm all that, but if I wasn't serving here, then you wouldn't have been doing what you're doing today, for example. Another person would have been doing it. Maybe doing something else, but your life would have been considerably different. My life would have been very different. But this is the path that God has chosen for us. It's the path. What is the path that God has chosen for you? The first time somebody said to me, a man came, uh, a friend of the ministry from our church, but a friend of the ministry came. He delivered the word that morning. And we were praying with various poses. And he came to me after, while we praying, and he says to me, God is going to take you out from under this, uh, under Pastor Sina and establish you by yourself. I broke up in tears. I wasn't ready to hear that was not ready to hear that. A couple of years later, I got the call. Jason, come to our darkness. I could only do this because I'm growing. And what I've learned along the way is because I'm doing this, I'm growing even more. One preacher said, preach faith until you have it. And then because you have faith, you'll preach faith. It goes on. It builds. It builds. Get involved. Get it pressing there and you will grow. And because you are growing, you will grow in those areas. Amen? Amen. So let's put some priority on growth. 
Let's, let's desire God in the things of God and see God do wonderful. Let's stand to our feet today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.